Now that we have examined more of exactly what a spirit is, and we will continue to kind of flesh that out a little bit as things go on, we recognize that the Bible teaches that there are four kinds of rational spirits. There is no explicit verse that says there are four and only four rational spirits. The way that we know that is because we read the whole revelation of God from Genesis to Revelation, and we see that as we're reading through, we accumulate evidence for four different kinds of spirits. The human spirit, angelic spirits, demonic spirits, and then, of course, the Holy Spirit, which is God. Um, these spirits have similarities and they have differences. Um, the greatest difference in all of the spirits that I listed would be the Spirit of God because He is omniscient, omnipresent, omnipotent. He fills all things with Himself. He has no bound. He is infinite and eternal. He has no beginning and He has no end. Okay? Every other spirit that exists, exists by his power. He is called, um, in numbers, he's called the father of spirits. The father of spirits of all flesh, but also the father of all spirits, right? And so he, he exists and he has within himself what theologians call a seity, A-S-E-I-T-Y. And the property of a seity is a... a ontological property of God, which is to say it is a property of God's being, that he is self-sufficient. He is the only self-sufficient being, and there is no other being that is sufficient in and of themselves. And so every other being derives its existence from God. It is finite in that it does not have all knowledge. Every other being is finite in that it was created. It had a finite point of time and existence. Now, from that point in time, the biblical evidence suggests that every spirit that is created is immortal, which means it has a finite being. It has a boundary in the beginning. But then from that point on, there is, there is no more boundary. Uh, of, of course, God is God and he can, he can do that or not do that. Uh, it depends upon what the pleasure of God is, not what the opinion of Robbie is. Okay, so that's ju that's just what the the biblical evidence is. So God is, com com in in a sense, comparing the spirit of God to these other spirits is kind of like comparing an ant to the universe. How do you you know they they both have a sense of of being, I guess. I mean, of course, the universe is dead. The universe does not have a... Really, I guess I, I misspoke. No, they're just really hard. They're hard to compare. But yet, but yet at the same time, uh, a human spirit, for example, and the Holy Spirit, in a sense, are made up of the same kind of substance, which is spirit. And so, therefore, in that sense, we are able to compare them. Whereas an, an ant... And, and the universe, the universe is just merely f um, physical matter and energy, whereas the ant is, obviously there's something else going on there besides just physical matter and energy that animates it. And so it, it, it strikes me that there probably is some kind of a, a spirit that perhaps we would not properly call a rational spirit, but yet nonetheless is a spark of life that causes the ant to behave differently than an asteroid or a planet or a pencil or something. Um, even a system, an ecological system or something. It's just simply um, physical processes interacting with each other, whereas the ant it seems to have a kind of volition um, seems to be able to take in information, process information, and then make choices based upon uh, its circumstances, right? Whereas an asteroid uh, doesn't appear to make any decisions. It just kind of bounces around based upon the forces that act upon it. So it's in that sense, it's much easier to compare 
the other spirits to each other than to God because all the the other spirits are not all powerful and all knowing like God is. Um, the I guess the next thing that I want to say is angels and demons ultimately are very similar to each other in that they all started out as holy angels. God created them good and he gave them uh, the kinds of power that all angels have, you know, depending upon what their rank is in the heavenly host and depending on what God created them to do. And um, so... In that sense, angels and demons are actually kind of similar to each other. They're actually called angels of darkness or Satan's angels or evil angels. The Bible does call them angels, but the, the distinction is that there is a, a, a divergence in who they acknowledge as Lord. And so ex explicitly... we're told that no one can confess Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. And so some spirit that is not confessing that Jesus is Lord is not a holy angel, right? They're not acknowledging their obedient, their duty of obedience and submission to God. They're rebels, they're traitors. That doesn't mean that they're outside of God's power. They are, they are utterly subject to his reign and rule. Actually, they utterly depend upon him to sustain their being. If he didn't sustain the being of anything in existence, human spirit, holy angel, evil devil, an ant, even an asteroid, anything, if God didn't sustain it by the word of his command, it just whoop, wouldn't exist. It just, whoop, just disappear out of existence, never to be heard from again. Okay, so I, I make a distinction between angels and demons or unclean spirits because there is a, a divergence between them in the, in the acknowledgement of their lordship, who is lord to them, and also how they use their power, right? And so angels obey God. Angels are not subject to salvation, if they make one mistake, God is a holy God and he's a judging God. And actually we're told in the Bible that we, we will judge angels, okay? And so angels will be judged. And so can you imagine that? What they do will be scrutinized by us and by God who ultimately is the source of all judgment. Right? He's the God of justice. And so they will be scrutinized. And so can you imagine if you, if you make one mistake, you're done. Uh, praise God, that is not the situation of the children of God. We are in a better position than Adam ever was, right? Because Adam, while he was pristine, he could have sinned at any moment. And in fact, at, at one point he did, right? And that had radical impacts for him, for Eve, for all of humanity, up to us and our children and our children's children, right? So the, the angel, angels and demons are similar in that they came from the same place, but then there was a radical divergence between them. And so I make a distinguishing between them, a distinction between them. Um, so, so somebody could argue that there's only three rational spirits. I categorize unclean spirits as a, as, as a different kind of spirit, even though they are ontologically similar to angels. Uh, recall that Jesus was speaking of the devil and he said there's no truth in him, okay? But he's also a deceiver and he clothes himself as an angel of light. And so he makes himself appear as though there's truth in him, but there actually isn't, isn't any at all, right? Okay. Um, so then with respect to the human spirit, we're going to have to make a distinction because... Um, so it turns out that there's two kinds of people in the world. <laughs> people who are sealed with the Holy Spirit of, of the living God who created them and everything else. 
and those who are not sealed with the Holy Spirit of God. And that that is the acid test of salvation. If you are sealed with the Holy Spirit, you have been born again, you have been enlightened, you have been made new, you are a new creation, you have been illuminated. These are all words that New Testament authors use to describe uh, salvation. If you do not have the Holy Spirit... Um, then you're not. And so we're going to make a distinction in the video talking about humans, human spirit with respect to that. So these are just some basic precepts when it comes to four rational spirits. And so uh, one, one question that um, does appear to exist is, okay, I'm, I'm talking about four kinds of spirits, rational spirits, but are there other kinds of spirits, maybe spirits that don't, don't possess the, the kind of ability that the rational spirits have, that is self-awareness, personality, uh, an absolute uniqueness. There's nobody else that's like me. There's nobody else that has exactly my experiences, my spiritual gifts, um, and so on. And so is, is it possible that there are other beings that are that have a spirit, but they're not, they're not rational, strictly speaking. And so in other words, we're, we're trying to identify additional spirits, um, which is beyond the purview of this book, because really we're trying to identify the Holy Spirit and understand who he is. But I do believe that there, there is some evidence um, that, that God has created all kinds of crazy, out-of-the-box, very different things um, read just read some of the accounts of the angels in the book of Ezekiel, which we'll talk about in the the video on angels. Um, but they're they have four different faces, and they they look like different parts of creation, um, an eagle and an ox and a man and so on. Um, that's very weird to us. You don't see people walking around with four faces like that's that's not what we're used to, right? So the point is, is that, that God has, has made a lot of creation. A lot of creation is spiritual in nature and that it just simply hasn't been revealed to us. Just because we don't know that it exists doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. What an arrogant attitude. Oh, well, um, I know everything that exists. I mean, of course, I, I would, God would tell me everything that he created. Well, what else would he do? Would he, would he make something without telling me? I mean, you know, what a what an arrogant attitude, an attitude of just begging for a lightning bolt to just do some damage, right? Okay, um, so God has made all kinds of things. Probably most of the things that God has made, we don't know anything about. Uh, so um, Ecclesiastes chapter 3, um, verses 18 through 21. I said in my heart concerning the estate of the sons of men that God might manifest them and that they might see that they themselves are beasts or like, they're like animals or like wild animals. Verse 19. For that which befalleth the sons of man befalleth the beasts. Even one thing befalleth them as the one dieth, so dieth the other, yea, they have all one breath, so that a man hath no preeminence over a beast, for all is vanity. So in other words, man, man and animals, they both die, right? Do dogs go to heaven, right? Okay. Um, all go unto one place. All are of the dust, and all turn to dust again. Who knoweth the spirit, Ruach, who knoweth the spirit of man that goeth upward, and the spirit of the beast that goeth downward to the earth. And so we're making a, a distinction. Obviously, there is a difference between a man and an animal because a man has language skills. A man has self-awareness. A man has responsibility, the ability to be able to respond in a, in a right way, in a moral way to given situations. Um, whereas a, a beast doesn't have doesn't have that same uh, constraint on it. And it also doesn't have the same kind of power that a man has either, right? Uh, so the point is the, be the spirit of the beast that goeth downward to the earth. And so I've argued elsewhere, and you see in, in the, the last verse in um, James chapter 1, uh, 
just as a body without spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead, right? And so the, the implication is that spirit is the spark of life and that without spirit, the, the operation of the cells and membranes and um, nervous system and the brain and all those kinds of functions, they are ultimately they are coordinated by the spirit. And if somehow you had the ability to, to zap an animal spirit out of it or, or protect the animal from control or influence of the spirit, it would just boop, just drop dead. Jesus, it would drop dead because it wouldn't have any any thing to regulate all of the physical atoms, you know, bouncing around and zipping around and all that kind of stuff, right? And then there's one more verse, um, which you could argue maybe this is a little bit of speculation. I don't know. Isaiah 31, verse 3. Now, Egyptians are men and not God, and their horses are flesh and not spirit. And the, I mean, that's really, really what I want to say. So he's comparing men to God and then he's c- comparing horses, which are obviously not rational creatures, to spirit. And so the, the idea that it's possible that there could be spirits which are not rational per se, but yet nonetheless, a horse is powerful. And we, you know, if we get around a horse, we're not going to sit there and read you know, Moby Dick to it or some such thing and expect it to understand and answer or write an essay about what we read, <laughs> right? But um, we do respect it because it has has a power. And, uh, it, it you know, there's plenty of cases of people who get bucked off of horses and trampled and so on and so forth. And so it is a, it's a source of power and we do well to recognize that. And so the whole, the whole point is, is that there probably are spirits which do not fit into this category of, which do not fit into this category of a rational spirit. Um, as to the statement I made earlier, do, well, do dogs, do dogs go to heaven? You know, I used to have a little miniature schnauzer and I, I felt like, that um, that God told me that he that he had her that is that is that theological is that biblically based is that just really a feeling or a hope or something um, you know the the implication of what Solomon says is who knoweth the spirit of man that goeth upward right it continues to exist it just goes somewhere else and the spirit of beast that goes downward it goes somewhere. And so it seems to me the implication is that the spirit continues to exist where exactly it is, what exactly it is that's happening to it. Like we just don't have enough data to be able to answer that question. Um, we can fill in that lack with just, just the hopes and dreams and fanciful longings. But um, there are other spirits and it would seem as if they perhaps have the property of immortality of all the spirits that God created. They Whenever they die, the physical body dies, they continue to exist.